In this video, we're going to have a look at the residential duct design process, preparing the drawing screen. We've already visited the equipment selection window and set our CFM and static pressure. We've visited the static pressure page and entered our pressure drop information. We've been to the duct preferences page and set up our duct preferences. And now it's time to visit the drawing screen. And now it's time to visit and prepare the drawing screen. Each sheet of this building, or each floor of this building, uh, is comprised of different layers. For more information on this, check out our video on sheets and layers. If I want to look at the different elements of my duct design, I need to turn on the duct layer to see the actual components, and the duct notation layer to see the CFM and duct sizes. And when I turn on both of these layers, I can see my duct system. One tip for designing a duct system, you may find it easier to work with the elements of your duct system if you isolate them by locking your building layer. Now if I accidentally miss my click, I don't select or move or drag any of the rooms. I can also use my selection tool here inside the house. So let's have a look at the different elements of our duct design tool. Here in the first room that I drew, I see that I have an air handler icon. The air handler will typically show up in the first room that you've drawn. Sometimes this air handler will go missing. This usually happens when you move the first room that you drew. For instance, if the first room that I drew was in the upper left-hand corner of my drawing screen here, and then I realized that this was too close to the margins, and I dragged this down here, you will often find that the air handler remains in this general vicinity here. Now, if need be, you can reset the air handler icon by dragging and dropping this shape from the HVAC shapes. However, this comes with a warning. Dropping in this blower icon into your drawing screen will reset all of your equipment information, including model numbers, performance information, CFM, static pressure, and all of your pressure drop data. So I would look for the air handler first, and again, you'll find it in the place where you drew your first room. The air handler itself can be stretched or dragged to a different location. I can move the air handler where I want it. This air handler here looks a bit like an upflow unit. If I stretch it out, I can make it look more like a horizontal unit. It should be noted that for the purposes of this design, this air handler should be thought of as both an air handler and the attached plenum, especially for all flex designs. I don't need to draw a duct representing the plenum. All I need to do is perhaps stretch out this air handler icon or calculate the plenum on the air handler's property sheet and simply connect to the air handler icon here itself. No need to worry about a plenum. And when I look at the property sheet for this air handler, I can see the general information, such as what floor the air handler is located on, so if it shows up on the second floor, it should be on the first floor, or vice versa. I can change that here. It tells me what zone it belongs to. If I have separate air handlers for different zones in this house, it will identify itself there. Uh, supply system color and return system color. Um, I don't like to use these tools until after my duct design is done, um, as I find the color coding per floor system um, uh, a useful piece of information, knowing what floor I've drawn my duct work on. Um, if this is a high velocity duct system, I can turn that on. We'll have a separate video for that. Um, the duct layout, if you wanted to have an automatic duct layout, you could select one of these here. Although I do like to use the user defined method and just draw the duct work myself. If we look at the static pressure information and CFM information for both heating and cooling, this is an output page here. Um, and I can go to the plenum tab as mentioned. This icon represents both the air handler and the plenum. Um, and so I can have a tool that will help me size a plenum. If I put in a height and a length, it will calculate what the minimum width is going to need to be. Um, I can do that for both supply and return. Um, entering uh, plenum information here um, will add that to your bill of materials as well. In addition to the air handler icon, we have two other icons here, uh, both of them grills, uh, supply grill and return grill. Now if I click on the supply grill here, I can drag and drop that grill wherever I want it to go in my design like so. Um, I can right click on that grill and I can find out more information about it. It tells me what room it belongs to here. Um, ask me if it's existing. An existing component an existing component is one that won't be on the bill of materials. So if I designate this as existing yes, it will continue to calculate here on my design, but my bill of materials tool um, will not pull that particular part on the bill of materials. Uh, register type, this is again for the bill of materials. Register material shape, width, height, all of this is going to affect uh, the bill of materials, but this will also affect the notation on the drawing screen and how it looks on the drawing screen. If I want to change uh, this grill to a 12 by 6 grill rather than 12 by 12, or if I want it to go the other way, I do have the ability to rotate a grill or using the drawing menu, rotate a grill, 
Um, but rather than rotate this 90 degrees, I could also just make this 6x12 instead. Uh, default airflow arrows, if, if I turn that to no, I can choose what type of airflow arrows, what directions I want, so I can indicate the throw of the grill. I can enter the rotate angle here also on the property sheet, and I can reassign this supply grill to different return grills on the property sheet as well, although there is a much easier way to do that we'll uh, go over in our next video. And so I'm going to place these grills where I want them to go by dragging and dropping these grills where I want them. And in any area I want an additional supply grill, I simply use the HVAC Shapes Toolbox. Now if you followed my advice and locked your building layer, you may find the HVAC Shapes Toolbox is gray. Select a layer that's not locked, like the duct layer, and you'll be able to access the HVAC Shapes Box again. This is the Supply Register icon. Simply left click and hold, drag and drop, and the program automatically splits the CFM between the remaining registers. So if I want to add another register to my entryway living room here, automatically splits up the CFM between the remaining registers. Now one thing you might do is you might have a room, like this hallway here, that's calling for a small amount of CFM. Now there may be no need to put a supply grill in that area. You can't, however, take that supply grill and drag it into another space. Instead of that, what you would need to do is actually draw this hallway here as part of the entryway or part of the kitchen to be able to bring that into those spaces. So you could delete this hallway and redraw it if, it's all, all, if all of the air from that area needs to be shared with a particular room. However, as is often the case with hallways and some closets, um, it may just be easier to simply delete the register. Because if you delete the last supply register in the room, as the program tells us here, the program will, will proportionally redistribute its load between the adjacent rooms of the same floor. For example, look at my bedroom 3 and bedroom 2 here. At 92 CFM and 91 CFM, when I delete this and say yes, it's now 93 and 92 CFM. Load from the hallway has been redistributed to the rooms around it, which then recalculated the CFM in these rooms here. Now once the registers are placed where I want them to go, now is a good time to start entering register sizes. Risoft doesn't need to know the register sizes to properly calculate the duct system. However, if you want your materials list to reflect the right materials, or your printouts to reflect the right grills, you're going to need to enter these register sizes, as Wrightsoft is incapable of calculating the proper size. As we don't know what your targeted throw numbers are, or the free grill area, the Q rating, or face velocity uh, targets of these registers. Having said that, I can group registers together. So if I want to use this, if I use 6x10 supply grills for anything going up and down, like this grill here, I can select them and enter 6x10 on the property sheet. And then for all the horizontal grills, group them together, 10 by 6. Now in all reality, we realize that these registers with larger CFM would need different grill sizes from these registers with much smaller CFM. But for the purposes of this design, it proves the point. Right click on the grill, change the grill size on a case by case basis, grouping whenever possible. You can do the same to your return grill. Now with my registers placed where I want them to go, my air handler placed where I want it to go, and all of the components sized the way I want it, I can now repeat this, this process on the next floor of the building, trying to, whenever possible, work one floor at a time. I turn on the ducts and duct notation, drag and drop my grill to where I want it, select that grill, change the dimensions to something appropriate, add any return grills that I might want, and locate and size those returns. And speaking of returns, with that done, we're ready to move on to the next step of the duct design process, matching supply and return grills. That concludes this video on preparing the drawing screen for duct design. Thank you for your time, and have a good day.